This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I create geometry mimicking a cathedral ceiling? So this question was sent along with an image, and here we have the image here. And as you can see, it depicts a cathedral ceiling. So the user was asking if there's a way to model the geometry inside of ZBrush to get this effect. So if you look at this image closely and you kind of visualize these little circular shapes as vertices and then all these bridging parts here as lines, you can see how this can be broken down into triangle and quad shapes. So how can I go by creating this pattern of geometry inside of ZBrush? So to do this, we're going to use the Z Modeler brush. And if I hop over to ZBrush here, you can see an example of this design fleshed out. So this was all done with the Z Modeler brush, and I'm gonna go through these steps on how to use the Z Modeler brush to create the geometry, and then you can use insets and Q mesh actions to give it thickness, and then some deformers to bend it into shape. So the first thing I did was I modified the image that was sent along with the question, and I've just imported that in. So if I come up here to the texture tab up here and open this up, and here I have an image that I've imported in. Now what I did was I took the original image that was sent along with the question, I then modified it to create it into a symmetrical shape. So I just took it and cut it up a little bit and did some horizontal mirroring and vertical mirroring inside of Photoshop, and then this is the result I ended up with. So now that I have this texture created, what I can do is I can apply it to a plain 3D object and then use this as reference while I create my design. I'm first going to go over the tool palette now, and I want to just select a plain 3D object. So I'm going to click on any of the tools in the menu here and then locate the plane 3D. Now when I select the plane 3D, it's gonna come in like this, and now I wanna modify the horizontal and vertical divisions. So I'm gonna go to the tool palette, go down to the initialize area here, and I'm gonna change the H divide to three, and then the V divide to three. So this will now give me this nice center and horizontal line. Now after I have this done, I'm gonna come back up to the top here to the tool palette and click make poly mesh 3D, which will now turn it to sculpting geometry. And then I'm gonna go back down to the texture map area on this tool and then click on the blank area here and select that ceiling image that I modified. And this should now appear on that plane. So now that I have my reference image set up, I now just need to add another plane 3D object to this tool so that I can model on that one and then see through to this reference image. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette up here. I'm gonna open the subtool area. In here, I'm gonna click append. And then I want to select the plane 3D object that I modified in the initialize menu. So this one here is labeled plane 3D underscore one. And I'm going to select that. And that should now append that as a new subtool. So now I want to move my reference image backwards. So I'm make sure I have that selected. I'm going to come up here to the top to move scale or rotate, which is going to give me the gizmo 3D. And now I'm just going to click and drag to move my reference behind that other plane 3D object. So now you can see in space, I have the secondary subtool that I appended, and then I have my reference image on that first plane 3D object. So I'm gonna go into draw mode now and rotate back to the front of my model. I'm gonna make sure perspective is turned off, and I'm gonna come down under the polyframe option and activate transparency, and then I'm gonna disable ghost. So now with this functionality, I should be able to get this translucent effect on screen. And now I need to come over to the subtool palette and make sure I have my secondary plane 3D object selected, and I should now get this effect. So I should have the plane 3D object that I appended, giving me this translucent effect, and I can see through to that reference image. So now that I have my scene set up for some modeling, I now just need to select the Z Modeler brush. So I can go to the brush palette over here and open this, and then in here down at the bottom, just need to locate the Z Modeler brush, and that will now be my selected brush. Now the Z Modeler brush is a context sensitive brush. So what this means, if I hover over an edge, a point or a poly, I'll be able to perform different actions. So for this process here, what I wanna do is I wanna insert some edges and I wanna insert edges where all these circular areas exist on the ceiling reference. So I'm gonna start with this one here and just click and add an edge there. And I just wanna do this for all those circular points. So just coming across and adding edges to where those circles exist. And then I also wanna add them in the horizontal space as well. But to do this, I wanna change my symmetry. So currently I have my symmetry set up for the X axis. So I need to come up here to the transform palette and then in the activate symmetry area, I also wanna enable Y. 
And now I should have Y symmetry and also X symmetry happening at the same time. So this is going to allow me to come through and click and drag and add these points. And then it should give me the mirrored functionality on the bottom as well. So coming through and adding points to where they all exist. So now I should have these points established where all these circular points are at on the image. So you can see I have them here, 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 and I think I got all of them. Oh, missed one there. Covered up now. So now that I have these points established, I now want to start editing my edges so that I can start creating the connection points to get that design. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and get a little bit closer to this. And now I want to hover over an edge and I want to change my edge action to collapse. So I'm going to hover over an edge, press space bar, and then in here I want to select the collapse edge action. And then down at the bottom, I just want to make sure my target is edge. So what this action will allow me to do, it'll allow me to collapse edges. So if I hover over this edge and then click and drag, I'll be able to collapse that edge. So as you can see, as I do this, I can collapse it so I can remove this extra polygon that was there and just have that point resting on the spot. So I'm gonna go through and do this to kind of collapse these edges in these specific areas. So this edge here needs to be collapsed as well. So clicking and dragging. And as you can see, I'm starting to get that geometry to follow the image. So moving this one up there, and then this one now needs to be collapsed to here. So we've got that going on. Then this one needs to be collapsed to there. And so I'm just looking at the image and trying to match where the collapse point should happen. So that's another collapse. And I'm trying to get all these areas to follow the geometry. So now that I have that area collapsed, now I need to go through and remove some edges. So I'm going to hover over an edge and press spacebar to go in the Zmodeler edge action menu. In here, I'm going to find the delete action. And now I can come through and remove the edges there. So now I have this shape going on. I can also remove this edge and this edge. And now I should be getting close to that final shape. So I have my edges flowing and each of these edges is matching to one of those points that are going to the circles that were on the reference image. So now I have this ceiling type pattern. So the next thing I need to do is I need to remove all the polygons that I no longer need. So I really just want this shape through here. So I need to remove the excess parts. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. Now I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and click and drag, and this is gonna allow me to apply temporary polygroups. And so I can come through and tag all these areas of polys around my shape. And I should end up with something like this. Now after I have all these tagged with that temporary polygroup, I just need to hover over poly and press spacebar to go in the Zmodeler poly action menu. In here I wanna locate the delete action, and then just simply click on any of those temporary polygroups, and that should now remove that from my mesh. So now I should just have this part of my model remaining. So now that I have this modeled, and come over here to the subtool palette and turn off my original reference, I can now come through and inset all these polys. So to do this, I'm going to hover over a poly again and press spacebar to go in the Zmodeler poly action menu. In here, I'm gonna change my action to inset. I'm gonna make sure my target is all polygons. And then down in the modifiers here, I wanna select border only and then make sure inset each poly is selected. Now, if I hover across a poly and click and drag, this is now going to perform this inset action. And as you can see, it's now insetting each of those polys and it's giving me that cathedral shape. So now after I have this created, I now need to add some thickness to this. So I'm gonna hover over a poly again and press spacebar to go in the Z modeler poly action menu. I'm gonna locate the Q mesh action, change my target to all polygons, and now come across a poly and click and drag, and this will now allow me to give thickness to that mesh. So now you can see I've got this shape. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of softness to my design here, and also add some tessellation so I can apply some bend. So get that cathedral ceiling in a bended form. So first I'm gonna come over to the tool palette, and then I'm going to go down to the geometry area and open up the crease area here, and I'm gonna use a hidden bevel feature. And so with this feature, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the polygrouping on your mesh and it's going to apply a bevel between the polygroups. So this works great for convex objects. So if you have geometry like this in your scene and the process to do this is you just need to come down to the tool geometry crease area and then locate the bevel width slider. When you are hovering over the slider, just hold down control and then click and drag, and this will apply a bevel to your mesh. 
So you can see this is the geometry I am now getting and all the areas where those polygroups are splitting the mesh now have a nice bevel. So now that I've generated my shape with the Z Modeler brush and applied some beveling, I now just need to add some tessellation. And to do this, I'm going to use the Z Remesher. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette. I'm gonna go down to the geometry area and then open up the Z Remesher tab. And in here, we have a Z Remesher button. So I'm just gonna click Z Remesher, which is going to process the mesh. And now if I turn off my polyframes, I now should have something like this. So now I can take my shape and use it a former to bend it into a design. So I'm gonna come up here and activate Move, Scale, or Rotate to get the Gizmo 3D. With the Gizmo 3D visible on my screen, I'm just gonna come and locate the Customize button and click that. And then in here, I wanna select the Bend Arc Deformer. Now with the Bend Arc Deformer selected, I can now rotate my model to an angle like so, and then adjust the angle cone. And this will allow me to bend that shape there. I can bend it in that direction and then locate the angle cone on this side and bend it in this direction as well. And then after I'm happy with that bend, I just need to go back to the customize menu here and click this and then click accept. And now I should be left with my topology. So that is a quick rundown on how you can go through and create a geometric design like a cathedral ceiling using the Z Modeler brush. So the process was that I created a image and then I modified a plain 3D object using the Z Modeler brush to get the topology I was looking for. And then after that topology was created, I can use the Z Modeler functions to inset those polygons and then use the QMesh action to give the shape some thickness. And then finally, after adding some additional edge loops by using the Z Remesher, we can then bend that shape using a deformer. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!